to uh, entering people into the meeting and we shall start. Let me start sharing my screen for everyone. For anyone that I have not uh, met at this time, hi, my name is Megan Wakeman and I'm the resource sharing librarian at CBLC. I'm just going to move this window right over here so I can actually look at you directly instead of off to the side. You should see my screen here. And this is the courier meeting. Um, I mean, I'm not really good at naming things. On this thing in here or not. Thanks. Um, this is my largest program ever. So you can always take that uh, into account when people say, what about the ebook? So you can have a job because of the ebooks? Yes. <laughs> we, <laughs> we are well established. All right. Um, so this is, meeting is really to explain all the different changes that will be taking place. Um, there's just a few notes to get started. Oh, Some of these saying. anagrams. Can everyone hear me okay? Is my volume all set? Okay, good. I can right. hear you fine. Um, I think there's a couple people who are unmuted. And I think that's causing a little bit of mm -hmm. background noise. So if you could just check and see if you're, if you're not talking, if you could uh, to the, all of us, if you could just mute yourself, that'd be great. Thanks. Um, if you're not familiar with some of these acronyms, that's okay. Um, it's just that I'm about to start using them and I'll be pretty uh, fluent in them in a second. So I wanted just to explain them. Um, different libraries have OCLC symbols and codes that are used as part of the couriers and as part for interlibrary loan transactions. So when I say VUE, that means I'm referring to the Upper Hudson Library System. VYD is the symbol for CDLC, and that's in regarding to OCLC. So we often um, will use our codes to describe the libraries. ELD is the courier service, that Empire Library Delivery Service that has been running to VYD, CDLC, uh, for many years. And ESLIN is the Empire State, State Library Network. So CDLC is just one library council in New York State. There are eight others based across the graphic region, and we're obviously the capital district. So ESLIN is the Voltron of library councils that provides ELD, the courier service. That's an ESLIN product. Okay, so ESLIN has its own website with its own information about ELD. And we also have an information on our website about it. So how it used to work with the courier system, with CDLC interacting with all of these things. We would get our deliveries, we'd get a book, we'd find out where it was supposed to go, and then we'd send it out. We used to send it on to the UHLS, which would then send it off through their local couriers, or we would get a book that was on ELD and we'd send it off that way via that courier. Or if the book was a school library book, we could send it off um, through the Capital Region uh, BOCES courier, which would come by once a week. So we had um, interactions with three different courier services. <clears throat> and really all of my courier transactions looked a lot like this. I was in the middle of putting this presentation together last week and I said, you know what, I'm just going to take a couple of photos to talk, show people what I'm talking about. And all of the items in these photos are the same books. I had two packages from ELD. I'm not quite sure why my image mirrored there because the letters weren't backwards on the transit bag. But these were the two items that got, the two bags that got delivered. And I went through them and I separated the items. And then they went on to these four public libraries, Clifton Park, Saratoga, UHLS, and Rensselaerville. So it was a matter of just finding out where the, the items were coming from. And then I sent them off to where they're supposed to go. ELD is all over New York State. Um, this is our hub here with the purple region and the various libraries going up. And um, there's several hubs across New York State. It's used by a lot of public library systems, as well as all the SUNYs, private academic colleges, and the CUNYs. There's hubs in Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Binghamton, Albany, Westchester, and New York City. I hope my Zoom controls, you can see this. So typically what would happen is a library would make a request, maybe through the e-form, maybe a large public library would use OCLC WorldShare uh, at 
colleges, the students could often fill out their own ILL requests through the web pages and Iliad would generate them. Or for some of you smaller libraries, this might just be emailing somebody else and they are taking care of that ILL request for you. But once the request is made, it goes out and the library that has that item will fulfill that request and prepare it for the courier to pick up. Uh, the courier would pick up the books um, through ELD uh, based on two to five days a week, depending on what the library schedule was for that service. They'd be picked up and brought to a hub. Uh, the, the local hub would receive it and sort out all the books. If the book was going out from cr across the state, it would jump right to uh, number six here and they would be driven out somewhere there and you'd get it in two to three days. If you've ever wondered why you've been able to get a book from Buffalo in two or three days, it's because of this. But often all the local books would then be directly delivered to CDLC and then I would sort them out and I'd send them on to UHLS, which was right across the hall at our old address. And then they could send them out through the UHLS carrier, which would connect also with um, SALS and MBLS as, um, as well. And then I would also send them out via the CAP region BOCES courier. And the patron gets the book. So now it's still the same thing, but we're really kind of just... Um, shortening the load. Since CDLC moved last fall, there's been an extra step with UHLS sending us things and us sending us things back to UHLS, which has delayed things by several days at least. And then we miss up, we miss the pickup times for the other couriers. So now we've decided the best solution is that UHLS will be a stop on ELD. It will not be VYD, it will not be CDLC, it will not be a, a courier stop whatsoever. So the item was sent to UHLS uh, by the VUE code. UHLS then will send the book on to its own libraries or to a SALS or MBLS libraries. And now the Capital Region BOCES courier will also pick up at 28 Essex Street. So it can, items can be sent that away. And then the library will still receive its books from its local courier. So essentially the same work is happening, but it's all going to be happening back at 28 Essex Street again. This makes uh, labeling really important. So all outer labels should be uh, addressed as UHLS slash ILL. Um, and inside the, each book should be labeled for its final destination. That's where you want it to go. You don't have to explain how you expect it to go or what the history of the book is. It's just, no, this is the library where we need it to go to. That's it. We'll figure it out and get it there. VYD, I, I, I'm going to repeat myself a little. We no longer accept couriers. I've already changed the profile. So it's going to be mail items only. We, we do not have a courier service. All VYD requests should be mailed directly to the shipping address unless the individual library is a UHLS, MBLS, or SALS library. And those libraries can also return their ELD items via the courier. So I'm going to uh, break that down for each library type so we all understand uh, it kind of more individually. So for academic libraries, what should you do? In many ways, this might get easier because all those VUE requests can now be sent directly to VUE. So that is the good news. So we are no longer in ELD stop, so all VYD requests should be mailed. That said, um, you know, there are exceptions to it, and it's if you know it can be transferred, locally speaking, you can do it. What uh, a lot of the academic libraries are going to need to do is update the OCLC codes for VIEW. So the same codes that you had active under VYD should now be uh, posted under VUE, and that will um, should take care of it. I also think that if uh, that causes a lot of concern, what we can do is have a separate spinoff meeting with just the academic libraries, and we can have a separate Iliad users group about this topic to make sure that everyone uh, is not confused. For public libraries, um, now rather than labeling things such as CDLC, don't do that. Just label it on the outside of the bag as UHLS slash ILL, and then send it to your um, regular public library hub. So whether it be the UHLS, SALS, or MVLS, and then those hubs will send it on back um, to UHLS. 
And once again, inside you want the final destination, write it out. New York State Library, Santa College, Buffalo and Erie uh, County Library System. Um, I know in the past we've said use the codes, use the codes. Um, I'm not quite sure that's necessarily the best thing. If you actually write it out, then we'll know which one. Uh, there, there are exceptions, like you can't just say Buffalo College. There are several different SUNY Buffaloes alone. <laughs> So um, make sure that you state where the book is really supposed to go. For school libraries, once again, you want the outside of your transit bag to be labeled UHLS ILL, not CDLC. Um, if I know that sometimes school couriers have um, gotten confused, you just say this is going to the old 28 Essex transfer station or something that they will know once the book gets delivered to your hub, they will know that where it's going. So you, you can have things picked up for UHLS slash ILL. And this has always been the case, but not only do you want on that transit slip the final destination, you do have to include your school library of system abbreviation. So a capital region BOCES address would just be CRB Albany High School. Wish we, which I'm sorry, is the Warren Saratoga, Washington, Hamilton, Essex. Uh, county uh, library system is just WSW Queensbury. Questar 3, which um, services Rensselaer County, Troy County, uh, not Troy, I'm sorry, Columbia counties, that side of the river, QST slash the name of the school. And for Hamilton, Fulton, and Montgomery uh, school library systems, the HFM and that name, name of the school. So th this is what I'm talking about. So these are different transit bags. They have the same, these items inside of them, but UHLS, ILL on the outside. And then these just were the particular books that went through that day. And they both say, say CRB, then Schenectady High School. And this is CRB Gilderland High School. All right, so what if you um, ask CDLC to fill your ILL requests and you send an e-form e to me? Yes, you still can. We are still doing that. That's not changing anything. All I'm going to do is when I request your items is you know, request that they be mailed directly to you. Um, you should mail your items directly back to the lender. Only send items if you know that it can be returned by the local couriers or ELD. Um, and I'm gonna repeat this a couple of times. Just a quick reminder, Maria College and the Albany College of Pharmacy are not on ELD. I know mo most academic schools are, these particular ones are not. So career do nots. By now, I think everyone might've picked up the ELD is for New York State. So if you have an ILL item that is not from New York State, it cannot be returned via the courier. Um, I know when I started working in libraries back in only uh, 2008, there was um, a lot of talk that you could always send, get it back somehow via the courier. And that may have been true at one point. It certainly isn't true anymore. So uh, you have to mail it back if the item's from out of state. And do not send mystery items. That goes back to that urban legend that we can somehow get it back. If you don't know where it's from or you don't know why you have it, or then why are you asking someone else to figure it out? If you know that it can go back to a, uh, a library via the courier, then by all means, send it on. But if you're unsure, I think it's really worthwhile to just call or email ahead of time and talk about it. Don't send weird items or weird projects to other people. And um, I repeated it again, CDLC libraries that do not use a courier service. Um, I mean, it's really easy to remember that hospital libraries don't or a small museum or historical society might not use a regular courier, but neither do Maria College, the Al Albany College of Pharmacy or Albany Med Medical College. Um, Albany Law School does. So I know it gets confusing if the same if a different school from across the street <laughs> uses a courier, but no, just send the courier items to the courier schools and a mail for everything else that doesn't. Courier dues. We will post these online, but we do have updated uh, guides for, uh, on the CDLC website, as well as the ESLIN website for ELD to make sure the item can reach the library. On the ESLIN page, the keyword is roster. If you click on that link, in fact, I'll show you right now. Maybe, here we go. It will list 
all of the schools, all of the locations. And you see, it'll have the public roster, SUNY schools. It'll even have a list of discontinued uh, places that had ELD before. So you can verify and check. And you'll see these are the hubs that are listed here. Here are the OCLC codes, and then here are the names of the actual institutions, as well as the address and everything. Okay. So yes, once again, include the final destination slip, just explaining where the item is, needs to go. If you are unsure, definitely ask. You're saving everybody, especially yourself, a lot of time and a lot of uh, and no, uh, headaches. Um, if you send something that really can't be sent off via a courier, expect that item to be sent back to you. I've already uh, provided UHLS with a nice sheet saying, no, this can't be mailed. Uh, please uh, mail it, or no, this can't be sent via courier. Please mail it back yourself. I have been covering for people and CDLC has been mailing back items that can't go on a courier, but we can't really do that anymore. So if you have questions, please ask ahead of time. And uh, the two weeks time minimum, um, especially transferring between systems, you have to understand that while you might have a daily courier every day, that's the local courier. And that once you're going between a school system and an academic library or relying on someone in the middle, that those might be more weekly courier systems that you're relying on. It can take a while. If you really need something and time is of the essence, you might want it to request it be mailed. Um, and then you can return it via the courier. Um, it, it's really hard, you know. I, we used to always say if it was, if time was of the essence, you wanted to um, mail it. And a year or two ago, I was like, I don't really know if that's the case anymore. It seems like you're better off sending it via the courier. Um, it's really unpredictable times we're living in. There's a lot of labor shortages, and the courier businesses are not thriving during this pandemic. Um, so things do take a long time. You can absolutely ask if you're concerned about something, but take a look. I mean, it, I would not contact anyone unless it's been at least two weeks. It takes a while. Hopefully now once things start, this change happens, it'll get back to being a little bit faster than it used to be. Right. And here are a couple of questions that people asked me ahead of this meeting. Does this change which bar of libraries we can borrow from? No. No, this is really just changing the delivery methods. All libraries, if they're willing to um, send ILLs, they, they are, and they can and should. This doesn't actually check affect anyone's policies. And does this change CDLC resource changing? Um, not really. We are still providing a lot of resource changing, uh, resource, uh, changing, sorry, sharing services. <laughs> And um, we still will have the e-form. I'm still going to be providing education. I'm hoping that um, if we're not dealing with so many career issues that we can actually put forth more better services um, that um, improve resource sharing across the area. And contact information for UHLS. Use this email address, please. UHLSILL at UHLS.org. Your contact names are Ann Pitlick and Amy Dubray. They are lovely people and will ha happily help you out. But I would definitely make sure that you set the items via the right way and that, um, that it's been at least two weeks or so. But I wouldn't um, contact anyone unless you're really worried. And I did include this at the end. Um, I thought maybe some people might be interested. If you are dealing with ILL issues and you've always wanted to learn a little bit more, there is a listserv provided by OCLC. This is the one, this is link will provide you to all of their listservs that you can sign up for. But this one is the one for ILLs. You will get a lot of emails if you sign up for it. So reconsider it. But th there's also lots of libraries who will use this listserv. If they can't find uh, somebody to fill an article request, they might just send out a Hail Mary here and hope that somebody will answer it. And it's worked a lot. Um, there is a Facebook group, which is just a bunch of IL interlibrary loan librarians chatting about work which people might find interesting. And I did provide this, it's just a Google sheet, but it's basically all the same links that I just talked about, but I did put it in 
what I thought was a nice, uh, how I would look at it if I was looking for a quick sheet. Uh, so we do ha have a list of the local libraries that don't use a courier, which ones are on the ELD roster, ELD label templates in case anyone needs them, list of our local schools and our codes for public libraries. So I'm gonna end screen share. Is screen share over? Can anyone see it? Yeah, we can see your screen. I don't know. Screen. Uh. Oh, there it is. It's the big red button that says stop share. Okay. <laughs> They're always moving things around. All right. I know. I did not uh, forgot that, oh yeah, the Zoom controls will be in front of your whole screen the whole time. So you can't actually read all the things, all of your notes. So questions, please, let's open it up. Uh, I do. Can we just remind everybody if you're using media, um, put it in a box, box and put it in a bag. Please don't send media because it will get squished. Books, fine, but CDs, microfilm, anything like that, and that stuff can be very expensive to replace. Yeah, definitely the microfilm. All CD boxes break. <laughs> so definitely put some in a box. I'll be moving in a few months. If people need boxes, let me know. There's um, a couple of questions in chat that mm -hmm. have been answered answered, but I just want to make sure everyone okay. hears them, especially for the recording. Um, is each VUE library an ELD stop, or should we send everything to UHLS via ELD and they'll distribute? That is correct, the latter. The, uh, the individual libraries are not on ELD. So Albany Public Library, Colony Library, Troy, Schenectady, none of those are on ELD. Send them to VUE and VUE will say, oh, I know this library <laughs> and we'll be able to send that off to them. Okay. This entire time since we've moved, UHLS staff has been doing the exact thing I've been doing this whole time. We've just been sending items back and forth. And then um, who is going to review the items that couldn't get delivered? Were they going to CDLC? And um, actually Maria already answered that, but I'll for posterity put it here. Uh, the courier will notify Maria when they have something that is not for an ELD library, I will instruct them to return it to the sending library with a note um, and that we haven't gotten any items in over a year, which is actually quite shocking to me because we used to get them all the time. <laughs> and that is the last of the questions in chat. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I mean, on occasion, yes, when I've gotten something that goes to a library with no courier service, well, if they're a CDLC member, I feel like my personal obligation is to make sure that our members get their stuff back. So I would just mail it on. But I don't think it's a, it's not fair for UHLS to mail all these items to Maria College. I'll say that much. So you'll have to do that yourselves. So yeah, there may, may have been some covering where you just figure out where something's gonna go and you send it off so that people get their stuff. Um, and it makes no sense to send it all the way back via the courier. Hey, Megan, this is uh, Sharon at MVLS. Um, I just want to, and maybe this is really a question for, for Anne <laughs> and Amy. Um, you know, it took us years to get our members to label things properly CDLC on the outside of the bag. And now we're going to, obviously we will update and send out new instructions, but there are going to be things that are still going to come through labeled CDLC. Our drivers from our local courier it all goes in the same bin here and it all went to UHLS yep. anyway. So I assume that if something sneaks through that Upper Hudson is just gonna assume that that is really their ILL and gonna open that stuff. Cause I, I will try to catch stuff, but I am not here every day that our guys sort this stuff and there's no way I'm gonna be able to catch every bag if someone labels something CDLC. It's gonna land at Upper Hudson anyway. I just wanna make sure. Yes. And to believe that it will get what? 
I yeah, completely just completely understand. It'll, if you label it for CDLC, it's going to wind up on my desk. <laughs> so as long as it's labeled with the final destination inside, then it'll get where it needs to go. Yeah, I mean, well, you know how it is. We've got to train a lot of a lot of individuals out there, and we'll work on it. But it's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> so thank you. I hear you. I'm very sympathetic <laughs> that ILL is something that. A, most people don't deal with all day long. It's just a part of their job responsibilities. So if you don't do it a lot, you always, where, what do I do? What, what, which step do I start with? Um, and labeling is really the key to a lot of it. Um, I have updated our libguides already. People, please feel free to um, send me any criticism if you think I've made it wrong or incorrect, but the codes are active for all the libraries and I have just changed everything to UHLS slash ILL. You don't need to send it attention to Anne. Like she just said, it really will, oh, this is for you. <laughs> Can I ask a question here? Um, I'm John from Capital Region BOCES Career. Um, so occasionally we get items that are, uh, either the transit slip is gone or was never written. Um, is there a capacity at UHLS or, or CDLC to kind of figure out exactly who would have requested that book? Is there a database that is tracking that? Or will it eventually just get sent back to the original library that it came from? I'm just curious as to how that works. Really good question, because I think it kind of ties into a bigger issue. Um, so, if there's a zero paperwork, generally speaking, I think I would just send the book back to wherever it belongs to, because I would assume that it's a return at that point that nobody's requested this item, it's just going back. Um, however, if it's if you have a question about your ILL that you use the e-form for, please send all of those questions to me, okay? If, you, if you're going to UHLS for your ILL help, then that's a question for Anne and UHLS. But generally speaking, if it's a, a CDLC involved e-form, then I would go to me. So you can start with me. If you think that it might be an outgoing request or something like that, then please, um, and I can check and see if there was a request by that school at some point. Um, and I'll do a little um, legwork for it. But typically speaking, if we just get, you know, sometimes this is a book, <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I'll just send it on to the owning library. Sounds good. Um, I know are any of the Iliad users feeling good about this. I understand like it might just be a matter of just updating VUE to uh, be have the same settings that VYD did. Well, well, there you go. Angela from U Albany says it seems easy enough. That is good news. I do think that a lot of um, the public libraries will be happy about this once uh, the change goes through, that all those VUE requests are going to get there a lot faster. Subsequently, a lot of the public libraries as well, the MVLS and South. Any other questions? It's a big change, but not really. I mean, we can wrap up this meeting. I am going to um, post the video and uh, share the slides out so everyone has them. Definitely please contact me. My email is easy to find, but I'm gonna put it here in the chat anyway. Thank you, Regina. Well, in that case, I think we can end the meeting if there's no other questions. We're all good? Excellent. Thank you all very much for attending. I know like 
I know changes in the courier system is rare. It's something, it's quite the big unifier here. Like I said, this is my largest program ever. All right, I wish everyone well. I'm going to be in touch. Uh, I have a very busy summer ahead of me with lots of stuff with resource sharing. So take care, everybody. And many, many thanks to Anne and Amy at UHLS.